Up next on Coastal Today, a CCU team explores ways to reduce bullying. New traditions ring in the school year. And eyewitness accounts to the Battle of Gettysburg come alive in a new book. Now your host, Robin Russell. Hello and thanks for joining us. A team at CCU is digging deep into a problem children face every day. An estimated 2.1 million bullies are in American schools, impacting 2.7 million victims. Here are some more astonishing facts. According to the Stop Bullying Now organization, one in seven students, grades K through 12, is either a bully or a victim of bullying. More than half of all students have personally witnessed bullying at school. An estimated 160,000 children miss school every day in the U.S. because they've been intimidated by a bully or they're afraid of being attacked. Here at CCU, a working group is formed to research anti-bullying efforts. They plan to share what they learn to help minimize bullying in schools and in the workplace. Robert Jencott is an associate professor of sociology here with Drew Terranova, assistant psychology professor, to fill us in on the effort. Robert, you call this group an anti-bullying group. Tell us about it. Um, the idea was to provide uh, a place where faculty, staff, and hopefully students, uh, as well as community me members can join and pool all of our expertise and our skills and resources to see what we, what we can do about the bullying problem. Uh, what are your, some of your goals in this group? Uh, I think primarily, I think for me personally, is to get students involved in the, in the research themselves yeah. and hopefully carry this through if they go on to gr graduate school or take it on, uh, especially for, say, t teachers. Drew, now you plan to do some workshops. Tell me about these workshops. Yes. Um, there's no single solution to reducing bullying. You really need a comprehensive approach. And uh, I've done workshops in the past with students themselves, with teachers, parents, uh, and even future educators to help them learn to identify bullying, distinguish it between, be between friendly teasing and bullying, and, uh, and how to more effectively respond. Um, and we're not talking about just bullying in the um, grades K through 12. No, no, in fact, I don't know anything about kids. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, my interest is more in wor workplace yes. bullying, where your boss is pressuring you to do this or that, which can in include s sexual ha harassment. Mm -hmm. uh, it can go into bullying and da dating uh, 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 r relationships, and the political sphere, the economic sphere. It can go, you know, quite broadly, and we often don't think of it that right. way. We think of Absolutely. kids. Uh, what will you do in these workshops, Drew? I mean, give me a little day off. How do you respond when you're the witness to someone else being targeted? Because 85% uh, uh, of instances of bullying, there are peer witnesses who oftentimes don't respond effectively. Uh, uh, teachers, too, uh, pre-service teachers, I've found, uh, are uncomfortable uh, in responding to instances right. of bullying, particularly some of the mild but more pervasive aspects of bullying, the verbal name calling, rumors, gossip, social exclusion. It's kind of muddy. The, uh, uh, how do you respond to those things as a teacher? It's not always easy to discipline children for those kinds of things, and is it the teacher's place? Right. Um, so rather than taking just purely a punitive approach, how, how can you use it as a teaching moment and, and improve children's social skills? Well, great. Uh, Robert and Drew, um, when you get through with all of these, we'd love for you to come back and tell us what some of the outcomes were. And, sure. And um, thank you. What, what a wonderful group to start. You're welcome. Thank, thank you, you for ha having us. Thank you. Up next on Coastal Today, a new discussion unfolds on the CCU campus about faith and the path of religious traditions. Join us October 12th for Coastal Carolina football's Faith and Family Day at Brooks Stadium. Prior to the 6 p.m. kickoff against Gardner-Webb, former college football standout Maurice Claret will speak about his life journey, past mistakes, and how faith played a role in his recovery. Claret will appear at the HTC Center on campus. Call 347-8499 or visit GoCCUSports.com for more details. Faith and Family Day, October 12th at Coastal Carolina football, the Grand Strands college team.
Memphis is a movie set, and my acting career began at Coastal Carolina University. Begin your path to prominence today by applying online. Welcome back to Coastal Today. A series of discussions begins soon here at CCU to explore pathways of faith. It's called Muslim Journeys, and the first discussion centers on the common ground shared among religious traditions. Here to help us break down this complex topic are Barbara Bird, Dean of Library Services, and Niels Raut, Director of the Jackson Center for Ethics and Values. Welcome both of you. Uh, Barbara, first, tell us about this series and why CCU became involved. This series is part of an NEH grant, and last year the um, uh, political science department uh, introduced a Middle Eastern studies minor, mm -hmm. and so at that time we were looking for opportunities to build the collection, and we decided uh, to apply for a grant that was called Muslim Journeys Bookshelf. And fortunately, we were awarded the grant. And then from that, the NEH contacted us and asked us to apply for a programming grant. And so I contacted uh, Niels and Sarah Sanders, uh -huh. and they had agreed to partner with us for this grant opportunity. And so this is a discussion book discussion series. Can you talk about some of the speakers that we'll have? We have Jeffrey Halverson who just is a new assistant professor mm -hmm. for us mm -hmm. and he comes from Arizona State and he's going to do two sessions and again I think uh, one of the nice things about the the session is we are going to highlight the diversity within Islam and also the multiple ways in which Islam is important to understand so much which happens in the world today. I mean as we're speaking right now Congress is debating yes. whether they are going to attack Syria or not, but clearly we cannot understand the world in which we live without understanding the role religion plays. And this is so exciting about, about this, this, this pathway thing is that I think we offer an opportunity for people in the community, for students on campus to get to a better understanding of one of the major world religions. Why is this important, Barbara, um, to this institution to, to bring this type of series in? I think it's our responsibility as educators. Um, we do know that we, there's a lot of um, misinterpretation. Um, what most that we know about the Muslim culture is given to us uh, through the media. Uh, sometimes we don't know if what we're being told is accurate or not. Yes. So this is a way for us to reach out to the community also to reach out to students and even faculty. One of the reasons that I was interested in this is because I feel that I have a lot to learn about the Muslim culture. And the whole purpose of this, uh, as NEH says, it's to, uh, they're, they're doing this whole project to bring understanding to yes. Americans uh, about cultures that we don't understand a whole lot. So I think that it's really relevant that this was the first culture that they decided to introduce this series for. And I think that from this, right now we know that 25% of the world's population is Muslim. Mm -hmm. And I have to say for myself that I don't know a whole lot about the Muslim people. And so this is just an opportunity for understanding, yes. uh, for me to think critically on my own and to make my own assumptions and conclusions and hopefully to bring some facts into my understanding. Very exciting series. I look forward to this one, Pathways of Faith. Thank you both for joining us today and thank you for bringing this wonderful series to Coastal. Thank, thank you. you. Up next, find out about CCU's strongest traditions and some easy ways you can join in the fun of celebrating those traditions. Join us October 12th for Coastal Carolina football's Faith and Family Day at Brooks Stadium. Prior to the 6 p.m. kickoff against Gardner-Webb, former college football standout Maurice Claret will speak about his life journey, past mistakes, and how faith played a role in his recovery. Claret will appear at the HTC Center on campus. Call 347-8499 or visit GoCCUSports.com for more details. Faith and Family Day, October 12th at Coastal Carolina football, the Grand Strands college team. Coastal Carolina University delivers a $300 million impact to our local economy. 
is responsible for the existence of more than 4,000 jobs. And CCU students, faculty, and alumni positively impact our community's quality of life each day. So no matter your color, the power of teal is undeniable. Learn more about CCU's significant community impact at CoastalConnects.com. Your community, your university. Set, and my acting career began at Coastal Carolina University. Begin your path to prominence today by applying online. Welcome back. Traditions are a big deal at colleges and universities. When you have a university as young as CCU, soon to celebrate our 60th birthday, some traditions have been around for a little while, and new ones are born. Diane Fabiano serves as chairman of the CCU Traditions Committee. And Diane, your group is working very hard. Tell us what has worked. Um, well, we have a lot of different things going on. Well, first of all, I'm the co-chair. So my fellow co-chair is Tiger Gloucester mm -hmm. from Student Activities. And so together we've just built an entire committee of different people from all over campus. And just, you know, each time we meet, we try to bring different things to the table and see what we can do. So. The newest thing that's come to life is um, something that we had talked about probably almost a year ago now was having the bell tower play um, either our alma mater or our fight song. And so you sometimes hear that at other colleges or universities and we said, well, why can't we do that here? And so we made a call to Porter Medley um, from Wheelwright Auditorium mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. he has just really kind of taken on that whole um, idea and was able to implement the things needed in order to make that happen and then um, Jim Tully from uh, our university band uh, he was able to actually play the song so now on campus Monday through Saturday you'll hear the alma mater at noon and the fight song at five o'clock oh I love that yeah tradition. so we're Great. really excited now something else that has worked well that started last year was Teal Tuesday mm -hmm. Yeah, Teal Tuesday is something that's been around for kind of a, quite a few years now, but it was just something the students still didn't know about. It kind of hadn't really taken yet. So um, now it kind of seems that we're at the point where, you know, faculty and staff are wearing teal on Tuesdays. You know, if you look around, a good portion of the student body is wearing yeah. teal on Teal Tuesdays. And so um, that was something really that Tiger took on, um, as well as Kevin Olivet from Athletics, and getting sponsors and people to you know, different departments to donate t-shirts um, for each week so that we could gather students and give away t-shirts to students that were wearing teal. Now, Diane, you have been here a long time as a student and working in different venues. I believe that you're getting ready to even dabble in a little philanthropy. I am. Um, I ha was, when I started working here, I was in admissions and then moved over to alumni relations. And then next week I'll be starting in my new role as the director of annual giving. So I'm very excited about that. Tell me what that will entail. Um, a few different components. Um, the first will be the call a program. So I'll have um, a, a about 15 or so students that I'll supervise and they will be in charge of that um, call a shop program that you know call alumni that have donated that have not donated just kind of updating them on what is going on at Coastal and you know why it's a great time to give and then um, another component it will be the 1954 society yes, yes. and so that's when seniors that are graduating can join the alumni association at a discounted rate and they can be inducted into the 1954 society at the ceremony prior to graduation and then the last component um, probably is what I'm most excited about, and that's the faculty staff giving campaign. And that's just, um, you know, getting the opportunity to go out and I guess telling the rest of the faculty staff how much I love Coastal and kind of explaining to them why it's important to, you know, give back to the university that they are a part of. And you do love this school. What does I this do. school mean to you, Diane? I mean, it means a lot. I, I, you know, I spent 2001 to 2005 here as a student, and I was involved in so many different elements. Um, being a musical theater major, of course, I was on stage a lot, and that kind of helped me interact, I think, a lot with the community as well yeah. as the students. 
And then, um, you know, just working at the gym while I was a student also, that kind of incorporated me into, you know, getting involved with or being excited about athletics and games and things that were happening. Uh, Diane, we're glad that you stuck around. Thank you for joining us today. Up next, the greatest battle of the Civil War comes alive in the pages of a new book by our own Rod Graff. The Illustrated Gettysburg Reader, when Coastal Today continues. Join us October 12th for Coastal Carolina football's Faith and Family Day at Brooks Stadium. Prior to the 6 p.m. kickoff against Gardner-Webb, former college football standout Maurice Claret will speak about his life journey, past mistakes, and how faith played a role in his recovery. Claret will appear at the HTC Center on campus. Call 347-8499 or visit GoCCUSports.com for more details. Faith and Family Day, October 12th at Coastal Carolina football, the Grand Strands college team. Coastal Carolina University delivers a $300 million impact to our local economy, is responsible for the existence of more than 4,000 jobs, and CCU students, faculty, and alumni positively impact our community's quality of life each day. So no matter your color, the power of teal is undeniable. Learn more about CCU's significant community impact at coastalconnects.com. Your community, your university. Set. And my acting career began at Coastal Carolina University. Begin your path to prominence today by applying online. Civil War buffs never tire of hearing tales of Gettysburg. It's considered the Civil War's greatest battle. And historian Rod Gregg has just released his new book revealing firsthand accounts of the three-day battle. Rod is director of CCU Center for Military and Veteran Studies. He's here to tell us about the illustrated Gettysburg Reader. Welcome back, um, Rod. You. It's always great to have you here. Um, I hear the book is beautiful. And um, tell us a little bit, bit about the book. Well, it's called the Illustrated Gettysburg Reader, and it's a collection of eyewitness accounts that surveys the Battle of Gettysburg from beginning to end. And it's uh, connected with a historical narrative and uh, illustrated with period images, um, photographs from the, from the field, and also uh, some sketches by a, a combat artist who was there and others. Um, but it's, uh, it's a work that uh, commemorates, you know, we're in the 150th anniversary of the American Civil War. And this is the 150th anniversary of Gettysburg, so it seemed like an appropriate time yeah. to put a focus on that. Um, tell us um, one of the stories that would be in this book. Well, uh, the, the book is 400 pages of, uh -huh. of uh, remarkable stories. And, you know, nothing is really, I think, more powerful uh, than an eyewitness account. And you've got uh, largely stories of soldiers on both sides, officers. But the book unfolds uh, beginning with the background on, on uh, Gettysburg and, and the setting, and then it follows the battle through all three days and then an aftermath. And uh, there's a, a narrative, as I say, which connects it all and, and, and hopefully uh, informs the reader and moves it along at a steady pace. But it's really the stories of those folks there who were there, uh, ranging you know, from uh, Lee and Meade and the principal yeah. officers yeah. and uh, junior officers to uh, soldiers in the ranks, and also documents, letters, diaries, memoirs. Um, I think one of the, one of the couple of the accounts that are the, the briefest to me are the most powerful. One of them is just a note that a, a federal soldier wrote in his diary on the eve of Gettysburg, and he penned a note in there and said, if anyone finds this diary, you may keep the money within, but please take the ring off my finger and put it with this diary and send it to my father at this address. And uh, then there's another one that's a, a brief account that's a casualty report from the 6th North Carolina on the second, which was engaged on the second day of battle with very serious casualties. And it just lists the soldiers' names and how they were wounded or, or that they were killed. Very brief document, but it's just very, very powerful to read it because it, it, it gives you this sense of immediacy, the sense of being there. Um, where do you come across these rare photos and, and documents? 
Well, the illustrations largely came from the Library of Congress and the National Archives and also some from some places like Duke University and a few from private collections. Uh, and what you have there are you have images of the various people who are involved. You have some of the battlefield photography that occurred there right after the battle. You have sketches that were made by professional artists from the illustrated uh, newspapers, northern newspapers like Leslie's and Harper's yeah. Weekly, who uh, were there at the battle kind of embedded, as we say today, with the Army. But I think my, my uh, favorite one, I think is most powerful, is a collection of illustrations there, kind of buried away in the Library of Congress by a um, young officer, a bugler from uh, the 9th Massachusetts Artillery, who was an art student before the war, a guy named Charles Reed. And uh, somehow uh, he, he did his duties at Gettysburg. In fact, he won the Medal of Honor for rescuing his, his commanding officer. But somewhere along the way, he had that sketch pad with him everywhere, and he did these battlefield sketches that on the scene, and there's an immediacy and a drama in those sketches that nothing else really can touch. Rod Gregg, you never tire. Um, between the work you do with the center and your books, um, we thank you for keeping these stories alive. Well, I appreciate um, it. We look forward to seeing this book. Um, where can we get it? Well, it's uh, available through Amazon.com and should be in, in bookstores everywhere. The publisher is called Regnery History. Um, thank you, Rod Gregg. Thank you. My pleasure to be with you. Mm -hmm. Up next on Coastal Today, Matt Hogue's Chanticleer Roundup. But first, a clue for you. This former Coastal student is a Carolina Forest native who earned her bachelor's degree in musical theater. She graced the Wheelwright stage in many productions and was even featured in a university promotional video before graduating in 2010. Find out the answer of Coastal Stars, where are they now, when we return. Stay tuned. Join us October 12th for Coastal Carolina football's Faith and Family Day at Brooks Stadium. Prior to the 6 p.m. kickoff against Gardner-Webb, former college football standout Maurice Claret will speak about his life journey, past mistakes, and how faith played a role in his recovery. Claret will appear at the HTC Center on campus. Call 347-8499 or visit GoCCUSports.com for more details. Faith and Family Day, October 12th at Coastal Carolina football, the Grand Strands college team. Coastal Carolina University delivers a $300 million impact to our local economy, is responsible for the existence of more than 4,000 jobs, and CCU students, faculty, and alumni positively impact our community's quality of life each day. So no matter your color, the power of teal is undeniable. Learn more about CCU's significant community impact at coastalconnects.com. Your community, your university. is a movie set and my acting career began at Coastal Carolina University. Begin your path to prominence today by applying online. Have you guessed who this Coastal star is? Here's another clue. Her song and dance talents have earned her the opportunity to dance on the open sea. Who is this Coastal star and where is she now? It's Rachel Swindler and she performs as a singer and dancer on Norwegian Cruise Line's mega ship, Epic. She is spending six months on the ship traveling around the Mediterranean, including Spain and Italy. Sounds like a great job, Rachel. If you want to share an interesting Coastal Star story, shoot an email to coastaltoday at coastal.edu. As the voice of the Chanticleers, Matt Hogue is on the road in the press box and behind the scenes of CCU Sports Action. Let's check in with Matt for this week's Chanticleer Roundup. Welcome to Brooks Stadium, and since last October, the Chanticleer football program has seen a transformation. Nine and one is the record since last year around the month of October, and it has to do with the man sitting next to me, Coach Joe Moglia, who has the Chanticleers rolling again this year, ranked in the national polls, and has this program on an upward ascension. And uh, Coach, uh, we talk so much about uh, your philosophy, what you expect from your players. We're seeing that really coming to fruition now. I very much appreciate you pointing that out, Matt, because that's what I think is very, very much about. 
And I think any leader in any field or endeavor understands that the first thing you need to do is, is surround yourself with the right people. And we've done that with our staff. And you need the people that are part of the organization to buy in and believe in what you're doing. And that's what happens with our players. So we've got tremendous support. It's not just me. It's, it's everything that we've got, number one. We said from the beginning that we have a mission. And the mission is to put a team on the field that all Coastal is going to be proud of. Now, I know that you expect us to win. I know that. And certainly, we want to do that. But this is about we represent our university, we represent Horry County, we represent Myrtle Beach, we represent the community, we represent our alumni, our faculty, student body, et cetera, and it means when you watch us play, we never ever take a snap off. We give it everything we've got the entire time we're on the field. That's one piece of it. The other piece of it is certainly our university has rules we have to abide by, the NCAA has rules we have to abide by, but we have, we have our standard, and our standard is we expect all of our guys to stand on their own two feet, set responsibility for themselves, and they got to recognize that they're going to be a man. Man means you got to live with the consequences of your actions. What, in your opinion, in your mind, is the real selling point of Coastal Carolina University? What makes this place special? I think we've, we've had our roots in Horry County and Myrtle Beach, but we are absolutely becoming a major regional institution. There's a tremendous commitment on the part of David DeCenzo and, and his leadership team uh, to focus on undergraduate education. Uh, there's an understanding of kind of the importance that the, the social events that are part of campus life are part of that, as well as athletics. And if you're going to participate in athletics, you've, you've got to participate to win and be excellent without cheating or, or, or crossing boundaries. You're not supposed to do that. But then I go back to the program again and I say, you got an opportunity to come here. And it's not for everybody, but this is our mission and we're not fooling around with this. This is our philosophy. You stand your own two feet, you accept responsibility for yourself. It's an honor for you to be part of Coastal Carolina football. We're recruiting you because we believe you can help us as a player at the national level. But you've got to understand that this is not for everybody. And if you're coming here, it's because you believe in Coastal Carolina and you believe in what our mission is. Put a team on the field that the entire Coastal community is going to be proud of and that we're going to do that. But you stand on your own two feet and accept the responsibility for yourself. We don't waver on that. We don't play around with that. If our recruits or their family don't get a little bit of goosebumps, when we're having that conversation, this is not the right place for them. It's a philosophy and a mission that has created Coastal's highest ranking since 2006, first ever playoff win. This guy got the Coach of the Year Award last year in the Big South, received many national honors, and things rolling along very well so far this year. Coach, uh, continued success the rest of uh, 2013. Uh, let's go a little further this year, huh? Thank you, Matt. I appreciate all your support. Thanks, everybody. Head coach Joe Moglia, and we've got more coming up in just a moment. Stay with us on Coastal Today. Thanks for watching Coastal Today, an inside look at Coastal Carolina University.